Yo yo people are well going welcome back to Run Stick Hub. This is what the old Raspberry Pi imager looks like. This is version 1.9.6 and this is what the new version of Raspberry Pi imager looks like. This is version 2.0.0. This is RC1 so that means release candidate 1. Please go ahead play around with it and leave some comments on the GitHub page so that they can go ahead and fix all the issues that they have. This is the web page to the new Raspberry Pi imager. So this is the Raspberry Pi forum. However, the link you need is going to be this one here which takes you to a GitHub page. So again, I'll put this link in the description and you need to go grab it from there. I'm going to also put the GitHub link in the description. So I'm going to click on this one here. This is version 2.0.0 RC1. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me to a GitHub page and on here, you're going to find all the, the stuff you need to figure out. So what's changed, a change log. And down here at the very bottom where it says assets, we have different versions of the program. So we have a DMG version, which is for macOS. We have an EXE version for Windows. And I'm guessing, and the last two options here are source code. We have a zip folder and we have a tar -GZ. So I'm going to go for the EXE because I'm on Windows. But if you're on a Mac, you need to go for DMG. So I'm going to click on that. Once that's finished downloading and you try to run it, you're going to get this blue window pop up saying that it's not protected. It's not sure what it is. It should be safe. But if you're not sure, leave it alone. Move away from it. Don't install it. I am not that risk averse. There's nothing really massively important on my PC. Don't do any banking on there. So if something does go wrong, it should be all right. I'm going to click on run anyway. It comes up with a pop up and asks, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? I'm going to click on yes. If you want to continue, you have to click on yes as well. If you click on no, it's going to close everything up. I've clicked on yes. I've clicked on yes. And this is the installer that came up. So I'm going to click on OK here. I'm ch I've chosen English. Click on OK. It tells me that Raspberry Pi Imager is running because I have the older one open. So what I'm going to do is probably go ahead and close it. It might still ask me to uninstall it. I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to click yes. It's closed it because I've closed it myself manually. It gave me an error message. So I'm going to click on OK and see if I can restart the installation again. Installation restarted. I'm going to click on OK to continue. And now it's telling me a previous version of Raspberry Pi Imager installed. And for me to continue, it has to remove it. So I'm going to click on yes. I can always reinstall this. That should be an issue. The only thing I wish I did know is someone in the comments can tell me where is the operating system image cached? Because I think I've downloaded like four or five different versions of the OS. And I have no idea where they're saved. I've never actually looked. If someone could just tell me where they're saved, that could be very handy for me. So I'm going to click on next. Then I'm going to click on accept because I've definitely read this agreement. I'm going to go next. You should definitely read it. So please, please, please go ahead and read it. It. I'm going to leave this as it is and click on next again and create desktop shortcut that's fine and click on next installs relatively quickly but I do have a decent PC I'm going to in the box that says launch Raspberry Pi imager is already ticked so I'm going to click on finish and that should bring that up straight away so this is what the new interface looks like and just as a quick side note this is what the icon looks like I'm going to zoom in as much as I can so you can see it clearly so this is a new Windows icon that was on my desktop moving on I've plugged in a 64 gigabyte micro SD card so I want to try this whole system to see how well it works to see if it looks better if it runs better if it feels better so I'm going to go through the entire process now the first thing I want to do before I do anything about choosing my device is choose where it says app options i'm going to click on that and see what comes up so i can play sound when finished that could be quite useful because sometimes i leave it running walk away and i have no idea how long it's taken some of them take five minutes some take 10 minutes random sd card speeds will differ eject media when finished that's definitely something i want to do so this does it safely i'm guessing enable anonymous stats i'm going to definitely click that because i do want to help them make the program better i'm not going to disable warnings i want to see everything that comes up so once i've done that so that's app options i'm going to click on save and that's going to save my details i'm going to go back on to it just to see if it's actually saved everything yep everything has been saved okay whether it works or not i don't know so at the end of this i'm going to go ahead and write to an sd card and if it does give me the sound if it does eject it at the very end i know that these options here do work the next option i'm going to choose is let me write it to my raspberry pi 5 it still does have all the raspberry pi's going back to raspberry pi 1 raspberry pi 0 raspberry pi 2 raspberry pi 3 raspberry pi 0 2w raspberry pi 4 raspberry pi 5 you know what on a side note i really do hope that they release the raspberry pi 0 three w quite soon because i think that's a device i could really get along with moving on i'm going to choose a raspberry pi 5 from the list because that's what i have once i choose that as you can see it's highlighted i can click next here at the bottom right click next operating system i want i i'm going to go for raspberry pi oh it's 64 bit a port of debian i'm going to leave it as a 64 bit one here it's 1.2 gigabytes one thing i do wish they could add to this program at some point is the clear cache so delete or remove the old operating system that have been downloaded and stored on your pc or at least tell me where they 
they are so I can go find them myself and delete them myself. So I'm going to click on next. From here, it's asking me which device I want to choose. I've got my 64 gigabyte card in. Enable system drives. That's fine. I'd, you probably want to leave this unticked. So system drives would be your C drive, your SSD or your hard drive you have as your main PC. So you probably don't want to have that um, included. So I'm going to leave mine as exclude system drive. So you don't make the mistake of trying to write to a system drive. And this is particularly useful for people who boot from, a, from an external drive. So you might be booting from like a USB, a memory stick or an SSD. I'm going to go ahead and click next. The customization part. This is where I can choose my host name. I'm not, I'm going to leave everything as standard, not going to change anything at the moment. By the way, the app options thing is accessible from any one of these tabs on the left. So even though I clicked on it on device and it saved my details, if I go, oh, let me go back through again. If I go down to OS, I can still access it. If I go down to uh, storage, I can still access it. So this is quite good. I like the fact that that's persistent. Customization, I'm going to leave that exactly as it is. So you can go next, next, next to go through all of this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the very simple installation. So what I'm going to do instead is go to where it says skip customization and it should take me directly to the writing stage. So I'm going to click on skip. Yep. Writing stage. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and write. It says this action is permanent. As you could see there, there was a slight delay. So this didn't pop up until after a few seconds. I'm not sure that was an intended feature or just, it was just a bit slow in the background. I'm not sure. So I'm going to click, I understand erase and write. So I'm going to click on that. that did play a completion sound which sounded exactly like the windows disconnection sound so it might have played both at once i'm not entirely sure so what i'm going to do is click on finish what you can do is click on write another a nice feature would be to write to multiple sd cards either at the same time or do a bulk thing let's say for example i've got two sd card readers or four on my laptop plugged in via usb or something i can plug in and, and i can do a batch at once so rather than sitting waiting doing the entire process again and waiting to click on write another you should be able to set it so that it could just write multiple at the same time so you choose drive one, two, three, four, five, as many as you have, leave it there, let it do its thing and let it write each one at a time. That could be quite useful because some people do have Raspberry Pis running in like a production, in like a real world environment. And sometimes you do have to write multiple things at once. So that could be quite useful. I'm going to click on finish and that's it. So Raspberry Pi Imager looks good, seems to run perfectly fine. I haven't come up against any errors so far. So hopefully it continues to work that way. Big, big respect to the guys over at Raspberry Pi. You guys have been doing amazing things recently. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Tuned.